there and welcome to Thursdays with Annette. Well, I'm coming to you live from the beautiful world of Thailand and uh, we're at P Patong Beach. You can see it in the background where we're staying. It's a, just a beautiful part of the world. So, of course, today's theme is tastes of Thailand. So I want to give you some fabulous tips on how to cook and how to eat fabulous Thai. So before we get into that though, I just want to talk about last week's show because everyone was loving the chicken pesto pasta, which was out of book five. Uh, just let's read some of those comments. Now, um, Sue was watching for the very first time and found it really interesting. Well, welcome to the show, Sue. Um, she wanted to know where do you find the cookbooks and a couple of people were asking that. Well, the good news is they're back in newsagents. So you just can go to any newsagent in Australia and find your bo the books there. Now, if they've sold out or they don't have them in stock, the simple answer is just tell them to order them for you from our distributors called Gordon and Gotch. There is stock available, so you just have to order them. But of course, you can also get them on my secured website. And if you spend over $100 on the website, you get free postage. So if that works easier for you, then that will be great. Now, um, now my daughter Jenna, who I you know, often talked about on the show, she actually made a comment this week and it was, she said, this is one of my favourites and I think that's exactly what I said on the show. Uh, and Sophia loves it too. And that's fantastic, the little three-year-old is eating healthy, fabulous food uh, as well. So that's wonderful. Lynn hasn't tried this one. Um, she's got all the books, so she was really excited to cook it that night. So I hope it went well for you, Lynn. And if you do cook any of the recipes, folks, I love to see the photos, so please share. You can never overshare on this show. Um, now, Carmen agreed with Jenna. This was her favourite recipe too. So uh, I'm glad you're able to see me make it. And I probably think that you might even make it better than me, Carmen. Now, another Sue said she loves the show and my cookbooks. And look, I just thank you so much. That makes me fizzy and feeling really fabulous when you say nice things about me. I mean, it's really great. Uh, and of course, my cookbooks are like my children. They're my babies. So when you tell me you love them, I just... just puff up and feel very, very proud. Um, now, lots of people um, commented, you know, that we were going to be in Thailand this week and we're wishing us a lovely holiday. And I've got to tell you, it is fabulous. We're having such a great time here. We're, lots of R&R. &R. We haven't been doing much, but just laying around the pool and swimming in the beach and just enjoying the beautiful things that Thailand has to offer. So uh, that's last week's show. Now, this week, it's all about Thailand. And you know, Thai food is one of my all-time favourites. Uh, if I'm out and about and touring or whatever, I'd normally try and find a Thai restaurant because I think I'm going to get a healthy meal out of it. And, uh, you know, because they cook, uh, you know, with everything, pork, chicken, fish, uh, you know, beef, you know, tofu, like they do beautiful tofu if you're vegetarian. I mean, you can get lots and lots of different seafood as well with Thai. So there's lots of opportunity to vary your meals. And that's why when I write a recipe, for example, I might do it with, um, say, fish, but I might do a variation of pork or, and chicken so that you can make it and it really changes it when you go, say, from fish to pork. It really does. And that way you're not going to get bored with the dish, but then you're into a habit of making it. So it's super easy when you're, you're making it all the time. Now, I just want to go over a few pointers that might help you with stir fries and cooking and ordering out because Thai is all about stir fries. I mean, I think in Australia, we would probably have in most homes a stir fry once a week. We just love it, don't we? And I'd be interested to know what your favorite stir fry is out of my cookbooks. Now, I wanna see that now. I want comments coming in right now and I wanna check what is your favorite stir fry. I'd be very interested. I think if I had to say what mine was, and it's a bit hard when you know I'm talking about my babies, but I do love the Penang. I do love the Penang, I do love that. And um, I do love the Thai pie, you know, the chicken Thai pie, which was a little bit different. But anyway, let's look at why I love Thai food. Well, you know why I love it? Because it's healthy. Yes, it's better than ordering pizza, people. Now with Thai, they have lots and lots of veggies in them. And what I love is that they're not overcooked. You know, they're crispy, they're beautiful, they're colorful. Whereas with Chinese, I think it can to be a bit wishy-washy. Flavors aren't so strong and I'm not a fan. You know, like I just, I think I'm spoiled. Thai food 
is just so flavoursome because they use special ingredients. They use fresh vegetables, they use fresh herbs, lots of things. But let's think about what should you be avoiding when it comes to Thai. Now when you're out and about, I would suggest that you don't order the deep fried food. For example, like the spring rolls. You know, they can be a bit of a problem because, you know, they are just fried. Um, battered, you know, the battered food, like, you know, if you, um, uh, you know, get into all that battered stuff, it really isn't great. And also coconut cream. Coconut cream is so high in fat, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But actually, something that I didn't mention, because I'm just so excited to be here in Penang, uh, Patong, is I forgot to say about the winners. Okay, I just had a thought. Okay, now the winners from last week's show won book five, which of course was the chicken pesto pasta. And I just am excited to share that Judith Hawkins was a winner. You know, Judith is excited. Pat Mariana, she won a book five, personally signed by me as well. And Deborah Hayes. Now Deborah homeschools her kids and it's interesting because I've had a few people comment that they homeschool their kids and watch the show with their children which I think is fabulous so hi kids hi how are you I hope the Hayes uh, family are doing well and enjoying my Thai tips for today so what you need to do is look and I want you to the kids find out all you can about Thailand because it's a fabulous place and maybe ask mummy to take you there for a holiday wouldn't that be nice <laughs> All righty, so back to the tips. Um, now, as I said, avoid the deep fried, the battered, the uh, coconut cream can really put heavy fats onto a dish. Now, when you're at home, you could always make my spring rolls. I think they're in book three at the top of my head. Um, and I've got a list later on that I'm going to share with you of some of the Thai recipes that I have in my cookbooks. So you can see the alternates and maybe you might put them on your, your list this week to cook. The thing you need to avoid is oil in the wok. Now, when you're ordering Thai, or even Chinese, their woks are very seasoned. You know, they're big and they're very greased up. So I, I say to them when I order it, please, no oil in the wok. And it really doesn't make a huge difference to them cooking it because, as I said, it's so seasoned. But it will make a difference to the fat count. How many times have you ordered a stir fry or, you know, like Indian food's terrible for it as well, where you get the greasy, like sort of um, surface, it comes up to the top and you've got all these greasy bits and that's the oil in the pan. So, you know, that will save a lot of fat and it's no big deal, it's super easy. Now, when you're at home and you're cooking, you'll notice I use cooking spray, but the key to successful Thai cooking is using a non-stick wok because that way then nothing sticks to it. And I just sometimes add a little bit of water to cook the vegetables just to you know, let them steam a little bit. And that's how I avoid um, the fats. And really, most of my Thai recipes are a tenth of the fat of traditional. So this is definitely something you should be considering. And I think it's really good to try different things every now and then. I mean, Thai food is just fabulous. Now, there are some of favorite spices and herbs that I just love 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 especially the sauces sauces in Thai is what it's all about and building the flavors you don't want it to be bland and boring because that's not Thai cooking at all and we've been enjoying th uh, beautiful Thai food here for the last I don't know five days and um, we have been really enjoying that cleanness uh, of Thai food so I just want to think about um, some of the pastes that I really love now there's always, the most used and most loved paste is red curry paste. The next one that's very popular is green. And the one that's not used as often, but I love it, is the yellow curry paste. Now how they make those pastes is they use the red chilies for the red paste, the green chilies for the green, and the yellow obviously for the yellow. And I think with the yellow they even actually said um, when I was doing some research that they often put a little bit of turmeric in it to help build those flavours up. And turmeric's so healthy for us that uh, I'm not complaining about that. And the good things about those sort of pastes and that is they're mostly gluten free. So that gives you that flexibility if you have a gluten problem. But some other paste that I absolutely adore is the massimum. Now my son-in-law Chris loves a massimum beef curry and it's the one that's got um, 
uh, the potato in it uh, and it's just beautiful and um, it, it just has a beautiful massimum curry taste and you can buy the massimum in a jar um, and I buy all mine just go to the Asian section and you'll just see all the jars of things and it'll be fine the other one I love is the um, pad thai paste that's a very mild paste it's not hot really and I find that's really lovely to use uh, in, in, um, in Thai cooking. I sometimes mix the pad thai and the red and often make salad dressings with it and other different things like that. So, you know, get, get um, interested in uh, trying some different things this week. Now, the other one that I love, and I mentioned before, is I just love Penang. And uh, Penang, in the, when you go out to have it, is always based on the coconut cream. So I don't tend to order it out. But if I do have it, like often Bill and I share things, and he loves um, the, uh, the curry, that I tend to not pour a lot of the sauce over the dish. And that way I just compensate that way. I still get all the flavors, and I don't like really, really hot chili things anyway, so that works for me. The other thing that I really like is using the low salt products, you know, like using the low soy sauce, the low salt soy sauce. That will really make a difference, especially for people that have uh, a cholesterol or heart concerns, you really need to watch how much sodium or salt you're having in your diet. So Asian cooking can be quite high, incredibly high in salt. So you really need to uh, watch that. Um, that's why I'm so proud of my recipes because I've made them still flavoursome but as low in sodium or salt as I possibly can. So, um, but the other ways you can build flavours is by adding the herbs, you know, like um, Thai uh, basil. We talked about basil last week because of the chicken um, pesto pasta and we use normal basil, which is Italian. But Thai cooking, you always want to use the Thai basil. It's got like purpley coloured leaves and it's quite fragrant and, and definitely has a different taste to the Italian basil. Uh, coriander, I'm obsessed with it. And you're either in or you're out with cor coriander, am I right? You either just think it's the best thing ever or you just don't want it near you. Um, lemongrass is another thing that's beautiful in Thai cooking and you can buy sticks of lemongrass or you can buy them in the jar as well. Um, you know, the supermarkets are really catering well for a lot of this type of cooking now than they did years ago. And of course, I always have garlic or ginger or both in my stir fries. I just love them. And I do use the jar, but you can use fresh if you want. That's up to you. Yeah. Now, what veggies that I absolutely love in a stir fry? Now, the, the trick here is you don't overload your wok. You know, like it's very easy to just go into the crisper and you just get all the different things that you've got in there and just chuck them all in the wok. But what happens if there's too many veggies in there, you just don't know what you're eating and it really does spoil the dish. So I always say limit your stir fry veggies to five. Just five veggies, that's enough. You know, so you could do like onion, snow peas, carrot, broccoli and capsicum. Beautiful absolutely beautiful and you'll be able to enjoy all those flavors together and I do try and mix the colors up so you've got lots of different colors like the oranges yellows and the greens and the reds you know it really is fantastic but I've written down a, a few different veggies that I like and I just thought you know maybe you should put them on your shopping list this week and make a stir fry for example like bok choy Chinese cabbage is fantastic I mentioned snow peas are great sometimes I actually cut the snow peas in half so that way they're easy to eat opposed to like when they're quite big it's really up to you sugar snaps are fantastic when well, you know when they're available baby corn like the little baby corn the fresh baby corn is just gorgeous in the stir fry and I love my bean sprouts bean shoots um, and you can get bean shoots in a can and sometimes what I do is I might just cut them up so they're in little strips to make it a little bit different and that way you're getting different textures as well so I think that um, that will really um, make it interesting for you. What about, you know, I often put asparagus in a stir fry, especially when they're in season and they're lovely and cheap. Uh, why not use asparagus? And spinach. Spinach is great in a stir fry. The trick here is remember not to overload and just do those five if you can. Now, rice is something that we all love when it comes to stir fries. And you know, this is where a lot of people can go wrong. And they say, oh, but you know, I'm cutting down my carbohydrates, Annette. Well, of course you are. But you know, it's all about a stir fry is not the same without rice. And I prefer the basmati rice opposed to jasmine. 
Now, jasmine is what you'll get when you go to a restaurant. And the only reason I, I say the basmati is because it's got a lower GI, and I think that's better for you. It doesn't, um, it doesn't react in your, your blood system as quickly as the normal rice. And so for people with diabetes, for example, you would know that um, the basmati is definitely the rice uh, that you'd want to use. Um, avoid the, the um, coconut cream rice because that's just cooked in coconut cream, so it's woeful. And as well, you don't need uh, fried rice. You've got enough flavours in your dish. Don't compromise those flavours. Just remember, boiled rice is just enough and it's all about how much you have. You know, like, just have a scoop. Don't be filling your whole plate with rice because that's when you are over-carbohydrating. It's all about moderation and normally, on a weight loss plan, I used to have half a cup of cooked uh, rice, um, but when I was on, ma um, on maintenance, I have three quarters of a cup. And for a man, they'd have one cup. So you can see measuring is still a good idea um, at times. And I do love my rice cooker. I tell you, I love it. Now, there are some health benefits to some of the ingredients used in Thai cooking, and I thought it was really interesting, so I want to share that with you today. Uh, because I'm all about healthy is fabulous. Um, and um, for example, lime, which is lovely in um, Thai, is, has a good source of potassium and vitamin C. How about that? Now, fresh chilies are a good source of vitamin A, C and K. Lemongrass is a really good source of iron and potassium and thought to be an effective alternative treatment for yeast infections. How about that? So that's lemongrass. Coriander is a good source of dietary fiber and packed with vitamins and minerals. And galangal uh, aids with digestion and is often used to help treat the common cold. It's, I kind of think it's a little bit like a ginger, but anyway. Now turmeric used as an effective anti-inflammatory and antioxidant. So how about that turmeric is, I have a turmeric tab tablet every day. Um, Kaffa lime promotes gum health and good for digestion and garlic of course. Garlic has an antioxidant aids with digestion and research continues in the effect of blood pressure and cholesterol with using fresh garlic. So all these foods are nice and healthy for us and good for the taste buds as well. Now I did mention coconut cream. Now let's talk about that for a minute guys because um, one cup of coconut cream has about 40 grams of fat and it's saturated fat. Whereas if you do it my way, and you'll know it from the cookbooks, it's evaporated light milk and coconut essence. So one cup of evaporated milk with some coconut essence, maybe like a teaspoon, three quarters of a teaspoon, it is four grams of fat. So how great is that? What a comparison. And that's what I always use, and I love it. Now, there are some hidden fats that you need to also be careful of, like cashews. You know, chicken um, cashew stir fry. You want to be careful because, I mean, a, a small handful of cashews um, have about, you know, like 10 grams of fat. So, you know, there's also fat in the cooking and all the food that you've got. So I often say, you know, be careful about your cashews. Almonds is another one. Uh, do you really need it in the dish? Remember I said about the oil, let's not worry about that. And also be careful of sesame oil. You know, just a couple of drops in the wok um, is all you need because it's quite high in fat. Um, and as I said, you know, just maybe get that cooking spray out and the nonstick wok will really help. The hidden salts, you know, as I said, for health and well-being, soy sauce, get the low soy sauce. Oyster sauce is very high in um, salt and so are some of the um, ch Chinese and Thai sauce bottles. So be really careful of the high salt content. Now let's talk about the cookbooks before we finish up. Um, what Thai recipes do I have for you? Well, in book two, I've got Thai soup, Thai curry vegetables, Thai fish cakes, and green beef curry, which is fabulous. I love it. Now, book three has the chicken laksa. Now, that's normally 50 odd grams of fat, mine's five. Hello, I know, get busy, excited about it. And it's even on the cover of book three. Uh, book four has Thai carrot and coconut soup and Thai chicken stir fry. That's a good one as well. Before, oh my gosh, the Thai, the Thai beef noodle salad. I remember someone did a wedding once and that was one of the, the mains that they had when they cooked uh, their wedding banquet. I mean, fabulous. Thai pineapple yellow curry, one of my all time favorites. Thai fish curry is beautiful. 
Now book six has got the chicken basil stir fry, which um, a lot of people love that. And in book seven, you've got that Thai chicken tart, which I love. I can never get enough of it and have that with a salad. It's beautiful. And also Thai sweet and sour fish. And speaking about that, that's actually what I'm going to cook next week because I'm going to be back in the kitchen at home. I'll be back from my holiday, boo. And I want to cook you a Thai dish. And so I thought the Thai sweet and sour fish, we had it for dinner the other night and I just love it. It's really different from the sweet and sour you get in Chinese. Now I'm going to do it with fish, but you can actually make it with pork, which is absolutely beautiful. So if you don't like fish, don't go, oh, I'm not going to cook that in it. Make it with pork, honey. It'll be fine. Or chicken, whatever. Um, and so that's out of book seven. All right, now, what am I going to give away this week? Because you know, even though I'm in Thailand, I'm still in the giving mood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you the chance to win book three. Because hello, look at the picture. That's the, ch the chicken laksa. Oh gosh, do you want that recipe in your kitchen? Yes, you do. How do you do it? Well, three lucky winners will get a signed copy of this and I'll pick them randomly. So all you have to do is like, comment, and share. And then in the comment you put hashtag simply number two good. Put that in the feed and you will be hopefully a winner winner chicken dinner. Well, thank you for joining me on the show this week. We've had so much fun here in Thailand and I'm really glad that I was able to do the show for you live from here. My gosh, we've been to Bali, we've been to Port Macquarie, we've been to Sydney. We're just getting all over the place, aren't we? But I mean, who knew that weight loss could be so deliciously healthy? I mean, if you want to uh, find out more tips and recipes, then go to my website, simplytogood.com.au and I look forward to donning my apron next week and cooking you that fabulous Thai dish. Thank you for joining me in beautiful Patong Beach and I'll see you next week. Bye now.